fact, sometimes in your marriage you've got to sit down and have a big chat, haven't you? You might call them arguments, I prefer big chat, it's less tense. I'd never argued before, I didn't realise it was all right. I just thought, when we argue, we'll get divorced. She's had to remind me that it's sort of couples just argue, the small things. She says, you don't like avocados, and I do, John. We'll get over this one. And now they become fun, don't they? Sometimes it's like match day, you wake up, and think, oh, we're going to have an argument today. I think, <laughs> a good old argument about tea time, and then I'll do that thing where I just stop listening halfway through and pretend I've won. <laughs> and if you've never done that, that's a real treat. That really is. Just stop listening, whatever they say. Just say, well, if you have to dissent to that, then this one's already over, isn't it? And just absolutely drives them fucking insane. It really does. <laughs> and I look back and, uh, and uh, we argue mostly in front of the telly, which seems odd to me, because it's quite a banal thing, isn't it? It's a key part of relationships now, rightly or wrongly. You're tired when you get in, you watch a bit of telly. We argue a lot. Now, I've looked back, I can only conclude it's because she doesn't watch telly correctly. <laughs> I know you're right to laugh. How do you get something so simple so wrong? But um, what she does, she talks to me while it's on. <laughs> now, that can't be right, can it? Because I'm watching that. That's where my attention is. I can't hear her. And I'll level with you. I watch telly like there's going to be a test on it one day, and if I fail, I'm going to die. <laughs> Someone's going to have a gun to my head and say, Giles Brandreth investigated albatrosses on the one show. True or false? I need to know everything immediately, so I watch tense and I can't hear anything else. You know, when I lived on my own, I didn't put the telly on and then pop the radio on for a bit of added content. <laughs> I can't hear, so I'm watching telly and she says something I can't hear it, so I pause the telly so I can ask her what she said, right? Obviously, I'd rather talk to my wife than watch a shitty bit of telly, so I pause the telly and I say, what did you say? By which I mean, you shut up, what did you say, the love of my life? She doesn't see the love. <laughs> She sees the pausing of the telly a tad more passive-aggressively than that, if I'm honest. <laughs> she sees the pausing slightly more as a... Fucking... No, what?! She absolutely isn't. I don't care about the telly, I just want to know what she said. But the tension of the room going silent and me staring at her, it's a bit like I've gone round the neighbour's house and gone, sorry to interrupt your dinner, she's got a story, do you want to come round and listen to it? <laughs> so the tension is a bit annoying, so rightly I'll say, what did you say? And she'll say, it doesn't matter if you're going to be a prick, start the programme again, right? And I say, no, no, I say, I want to talk, what did you say? And she'll say, no, honestly, it doesn't matter. And then we have another problem that she's not really... She's just talking in the way you would if you were walking through the park or enjoying a meal. She's sharing the experience with me, but because for some reason she enjoys my company, right? So I say, what did you say? And she'll say, well, I just said that's like the place we went. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shall we crack on, then? I feel like I'm being an arsehole, but it's not. I just don't know what to say. That's just a statement, isn't it? I can only agree with it. Sometimes I force an opinion. I'll say, yes, the tablecloths are green. <laughs> and then I know I've got that wrong, and I feel bad. I say, I don't know what to say. So we start the programme again. She says something else. I pause it again. She goes upstairs the second time. <laughs> She'd rather sit alone in the darkness than watch TV with the piece of shit she's betrothed the rest of her life to. <laughs> And I feel awful, but I've never explained to her how stressful I find watching telly. I don't really watch telly for the joy of what's on. I watch telly so we can get to the end of that programme, delete it, and get the memory back up on the planet. <laughs> I don't watch telly, I tidy up. She says, what do you want to watch? I think, well, that's 3%, so let's get rid of that fucking thing, shall we? <laughs> get rid of that, we'll get back above 30%, and I can start sleeping at night again. <laughs> Cos when I go away, she records stuff because she thinks it's like a kitchen cupboard. Cram it full of delicious things to choose from. She doesn't understand it's a to-do list. Everything on there is a task. I look at it when I get back and I think, psycho pussies when cats attack. When are we going to watch that? <laughs> we still haven't watched those bloody fucking thing that I say there that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> What was your favourite bit? When he fucked it off. I love that. <laughs> I like the things, but the shit things were the best. <laughs> when are we going to watch that? We still haven't watched those bloody wolf holes we recorded two years ago. And then I think we're going to have to go through all these new ones at the weekly meeting. <laughs> she doesn't know we have a weekly meeting. She thinks I get up early on Wednesdays and put a suit on. 
but I can't handle the pressure of it. And what happens is I, I, I don't like to work at weekends, really, during X Factor and Britain's Got Talent and all those, because they're 3% once you get the extra show in and the next one on the Sunday, I can't be doing with that, so it's easier to just stay in. But when I get back, there's like five or six of them. I say, are you going to watch these X Factors? And she says, no, you can delete all them. And she does that. I thought she recorded X Factor to hurt my feelings, because I'm not going to lie to you, she records it while she's watching it. <laughs> Which is a bit like phoning a takeaway in the middle of your tea, isn't it, really? <laughs> It's happening now, we're having it, aren't we? But I found out that what happens is then I get back and I say, are you going to watch all these? And she says, no, you can delete all them. And something happens to my face if I get to delete 10% or more in one go. That has obviously never happened during sex and didn't happen on our wedding day. <laughs> She'll say, no, you can delete all them. <laughs> 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 I'll go and get my cock out, hang on. But more often than not, as I say, it ends in an argument. She goes to bed, I feel awful. I go in the kitchen and get a whiskey, and I see the dishwasher's finished. And I think, right, well, I'll unload the dishwasher, because she made tea and loaded the dishwasher. On that occasion, not every night, I'm not an arsehole. That's how we operate. We used to do what I'm sure a lot of you do if you cohabit. One would cook, the other one would wash up. We knock that on the head quite early doors, because uh, I tend to tidy up as a go while I'm cooking, and she doesn't. <laughs> That's not a problem, is it? That's just two people who do things differently. She does it her way, and I do it right. <laughs> I can't help myself. I run a little dish of soapy water at the beginning, and I'll pop the, the, the chopping knife, just do that at the time. I just pop it in soak. If you don't want to wash it, that's fine. Pop it in soak. Pop a bit of water in there. You got the beans out, pop a bit of water in there. Bit of water in there. Let's not, let's not put it straight back on the ring there. Let's not put it straight back on the ring with that little teaspoon of bean juice still in it and the residual heat of the ring there just... <laughs> Just burning that on like a glaze in a kiln. <laughs> you keep scrubbing it, don't come off, does it? It's just an orange pan now. Everything's orange. Sometimes I go in the kitchen, I think I'm getting cataracts. <laughs> Residual bean juice everywhere. Just pop it in. So, same with your baking trays. Tip your roasties out, little bit of water in there, back in the oven, shut the door. The residual heat of the oven, it boils that water, it lifts all the grease off. You tip that away, you've washed the thing already, and you can write that down, because that's fucking gold, that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You're very kind, but I wish that hadn't been the biggest reception of the evening, I really do. <laughs> Sometimes I think, maybe I'm one of them political comedians, and then I see that and I think, maybe I'm Prue Leith on tour. <laughs> It's a lovely tip, that, and that works for cottage pie, lasagna, or anything. It just slides straight off. Washing up becomes sexual. I do it naked when she's gone to bed. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> just get it right off there with the finger. It slides right off, but, you know, you just pop it in soak. But what that would mean is I'd do a Sunday roast. Sometimes she'd go in to wash up. There's only a spoon and a plate. The next day, she makes me a sandwich. <laughs> okay, bomb's gone off in there. She's used everything we own. Sometimes... Sometimes I can't even get in the kitchen door. I have to go in the garden and climb in the window like that. <laughs> Stand on the worktop shouting through, how have you used a tagine? <laughs> so now the rule is you do everything, you get the next night off. That's fairest, right? But what it does mean is emptying the dishwasher is one of those weird jobs, isn't it? It's hours after the event, so I'll see it's finished. I think, well, I'll open the door, pull the drawer out, and then, to be fair, she'll often come back down from bed then because she can hear me screaming. <laughs> She said, what's the matter, John? Is it the spider? I said, it's not the spider, it's the dishwasher. She says, you're joking. I said, no, get comfortable while we go through it all. <laughs> then we'll go through the litany of crimes that's happened in here, because, like so many people, she seems to believe this is a magic box that cleans anything roughly in its vicinity, on the worktop, in the living room. If you love your family, you load this with the attention of a psychopath. Everything has its place. I say, well, it's this bowl that caught my attention, first of all. This upturned bowl here on the top shelf. Now, it's not wrong to put a bowl on the top shelf on a light load, on a light load, on a light load, on a light load. <laughs> so, malfunctioned a bit there, I am sorry. <laughs> we tend to put the bowls down here, do you see, on the bottom shelf, where the rungs are a bit wider. Now, that tips the bowls forward. You get more purchase underneath to get that filth off. But what you've done here is perfectly acceptable on a light load. <laughs> I just noticed you've put this upturned bowl on top of an upturned plate. 